Okay, Jam, on today's bonus episode, we are going to answer listener questions about purple shampoo, why we put salt on icy roads, and we're going to deep dive into glutamate from our friend, a biochemist. Okay, nice. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. Let's do it. Let's go. Hey, I'm Melissa. I'm Jam. And I'm a chemist. And I'm not. And welcome to Chemistry for Your Life. The podcast helps you understand the chemistry of your everyday life. Bonus, Bonus edition. edition. Dang, we're getting good. Yeah. We're getting this is, good at that. This is our ask, what we're calling now, Ask a Chemist. Yeah, Ask a Chemist edition. They've always been Ask a Chemist, but... Um, it's a catchy title. Yeah. Just came out of my old noggin one night late, 1 a.m., trying to finish. Before you were a bedtime guy? <laughs> yep. For your uh, bed on time guy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And if you're wondering what, if you're watching on YouTube and you're wondering what these little molecules are, well, that's a sneak peek into next week's episode. Mm. Mm. But I'm going to be playing with them because I have ADHD. So they're my like fidget, fidget toys now. Nice. Fidget molecules. <laughs> fidget molecules. Are you ready for the first question? I'm ready. Okay. How does purple shampoo work? Or, I guess, does it work? This is from Sadie on Instagram. Okay, so purple shampoo does work. And guess what? What? It works on this guy's hair right here. I bet it does. What does it do to your hair? It is supposed to, what I was told, and it, from personal experience, seems to work, um, helps remove some of the, what they, what they kind of call, like, bronzy, like, dull way that, Blonde hair can sometimes look. Mm-hmm. It's got stuff on it or whatever. I don't really know. And it helps it look more like it's supposed to look. Mm. I didn't know that you, that natural blonde struggled with that. I, um, when I was answering the question for our, you know, formulate we've talked about is our custom shampoo, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Uh, customized chemistry shampoo stuff. They, I was about to be like, not a sponsor, but they are a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Go get yourself some formulate. Yep. Yeah. Um, and their sponsor, we chose, you know. Yeah. Di- Jam little- found them first, and then he asked if they wanted to sponsor us. So that's like a good endorsement. Yeah. I th- uh, w- the way it talked about on there, because it didn't ask anything about it, it wasn't asking what colors your hair dyed or anything like that. Um, but apparently, it's just a a thing that is true whether your hair is blonde or has been made to be blonde. Okay. So. Well, here's the thing. Okay. A lot of times, like what you said, people have a yellower blonde and they want like a whiter blonde Mm. or a cooler tone blonde. So like a lot of people call it like an ashy blonde where Mm -hmm. it really is like, like just white. Yeah. Rather than like a warm yellowy blonde. Mm. Some people say it like, oh, my blonde is getting brassy or brassy. Brassy, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or warm toned. Yeah. Okay. So now let's think about colors and why this might so we've talked about before that the color we see is the color that isn't absorbed by light, right? Right. So if something's looking like yellowy, orangey, brassy, that's because it's not absorbing those colors, but it is absorbing a lot of like the other colors, like red, blue, purple, mm-hmm. right? Right. So the way purple shampoo works is it basically just layers on top of, oh, sorry, I'm leaning okay. too far away. Okay. The way that purple shampoo works is it basically just layers on top of the hair and then it absorbs in the other areas. So if, you know, you're seeing purple, then that's because the yellow is being absorbed, right? Uh-huh, right? So it's like, imagine that you have like a rainbow and the hair absorbs everything but red, blue, and purple because red and blue make purple. Mm -hmm. And then the hair, so that's what the hair absorbs. Then the shampoo absorbs, wait, hang on. Did I say it backwards? The hair absorbs red, blue, purple, and not the yellow, orange. I said that backwards. Right. And the shampoo does the opposite. So then everything is getting absorbed, which light is white, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So- that's how it works. Ah, interesting. Basically, you're layering, depositing molecules on top of your hair that absorb the color that your hair is not absorbing. That makes it look brassy and yellow. Mm-hmm. And 
you could like counter it out. Basically you cancel it out. A, a picture I have in my mind right now is like we have tools like what you did at the pool store we've talked about before. Oh yeah. That like can shine a light through something and it'll like show you basically on the color spectrum. Okay. Where is this absorbing light? And they're, their absorption would be exactly opposite. Like if you have like a warm yellowish color, it would be like, oh, it's absorbing here and here and here. And purple shampoo would be exactly the opposite. Uh, so you would get everything covered as much as possible. It. Interesting. Yeah. So that's how purple shampoo works. And it does yeah. work. I have noticed that um, it has just a slight effect mm -hmm. for me. But, you know, my hair has changed color and got a little less blonde over time. And it's like, it's obviously not going to do something about that. It's like, yeah. so it's not like, it's weird because it's not like it's, it's the parts that are still pretty blonde. It probably helps yeah. look more blonde, but the parts that have gone browner, it's like, ah, oh, this brown is nothing you can do about it. Yeah. It's, it's just like brown. Kind of interesting. But also another place people do that is in buttercream frosting because buttercream is very, it's made from butter, which is not white. And so if you want the like, Pure, perfect white frosting. You could just put like a dab of purple in. Mm. It's like purple shampoo. Interesting. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, who would have thought? Mm -hmm. Also, did you know that the shampoo that they gave me was purple? I didn't know that. So it took, uh, filled out all the stuff and then it was like, it just suggested it. it was like, hey, your hair is blonde. Do you want this in there? It was, this is what it helps with. And I was like, I have noticed that sometimes that it mm -hmm. looks like that brassy look or whatever. I was like, sure. Why not? Who cares? I have heard though, if you do too much purple, it can like kind of build up and then start to make your hair look dull and weird. Whoa. But I wonder if that's for like color depositing purples that are like right. really made to maintain the dye like or the bleached blonde. You know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I don't know for sure. That's just something I heard on TikTok from a hair expert, but not a chemistry expert. So I don't know. Yeah. Well, if I ever start looking a little purpley, let me know. Okay. Um, I'll let you know. <laughs> Uh, the next question is one we get a lot. We have answered before, but it's always a good one. Why do we put salt on icy roads? Nice. And it's just because, I think it's because they're too sweet. You know? <laughs> this is from Ayush. Ayush, yes. Ayush, did Was this from right? uh, email or Instagram? Instagram. Um, so we basically, this is colligative properties. So we've talked about this in a very early episode about jam trying to boil water in a pot. Mm -hmm. But basically if you add salt to water or any other, you could also add sugar or anything else, it will do two things. It will raise the boiling point and it will decrease the freezing point. And that is the best I can describe that is these, these molecules of something else are basically getting in between the intermolecular forces, which we've talked about that a lot, but basically intermolecular forces are the way two molecules are attracted to each other. Um, usually it's like, it's not like a bond. It's like, oh, how much do these two different molecules want to come together? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. That's intramolecular forces. So intramolecular forces get disrupted by these little salts or whatever that are like, you know, making them, making the water not be able to interact with itself as easily. And so that makes it both harder to boil and harder to freeze. Mm. And that's good for our roads because we want them to freeze at a lower temperature so that we're not driving on sheets of ice. Right. But you could also sugar them. And early on, our friend Steven did send um, an article about somewhere trying to sugar their roads. Yeah. But I thought right. that would be messy. Yeah. Mm. Sorry for my yawn. This is our first time ever recording at night. And uh -huh. so we're both kind of getting used to it. Yeah. Yeah. Very different. But yeah. So it's a, it's a cool trick, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And it's like, if we can't prevent the, the weather from getting colder, why don't we make the water not freeze? <laughs> and we did also talk about that in the um, thermometer episode because yeah. he made zero degrees as cold as he could get the water, which is why in Fahrenheit, 32 degrees is not zero. Mm. There you go. Good old Fahrenheit using mm -hmm. negative properties. Mm -hmm. And that's why we salt roads or sugar them. Yeah. Thanks, Ayush. Thanks, Ayush. Yes, that's a very common question and super interesting. So it's good good to, to talk about it again. What, this is from Alicia on Instagram. What's something you know that you wish everyone else did? And she said, for me, it's free radicals. 
I really tried to answer this question. And then I realized the thing is, that's why I started this podcast. <laughs> right. It's like, right. there's so many things that I learned about that were really exciting and interesting that I felt like other people deserve to know. And like, they should know they, they should get to know. And so I think that's a big thing, but you know what? Something else I, I realized like, okay, so, um, we'll talk about this a little bit more in the next episode in the community, but, um, I've had blood sugars on uh, blood sugar issues ongoing for a really long time. And so I've done a ton of research and I found probably what my problem was. And I also found things that have been addressing my problem. And I had to figure it all out on my own because mm. the doctors that I went to didn't really help me. Mm. And that's frustrating. Yep. And I, I thought like I have the skill set to do this because I've literally been trained to go read these like papers and figure things out but yeah. I wish everybody had the skill set to do that or that we gave people more options, you know, mm -hmm. but like in lieu of that, something I know how to do that I wish everyone knew how to do is like interpret papers like that. Yeah. I think that would be a really useful skill. So, but the nice thing about like TikTok and YouTube and this podcast is now you do at least have access to people who can interpret things like that. Yeah. So that's my thought. That's a good one. I can't, I thought, I'm having a hard time deciding. I mean, like, First thought would be coffee, right? Oh, yeah. Something coffee related. This is for both of us, right? Yeah. Okay. I was like, so assuming that, but I was like, wait a second. <laughs> and I think when she says free radicals, maybe she like wishes that people knew that free radicals are real things and also that you yeah. need antioxidants, which we have an episode about. Yeah. To make them go away. I mean, I guess to, I'll, re I'll do two things. One, I'll reference uh, episodes we've done. I wish people knew about Teflon and like. Ooh, yeah. Care, care yeah, yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. That'd be awesome. Obviously, didn't know about that myself. I learned about it in the podcast. Um, yeah. Another thing I wish people knew about for sure in the coffee space is that, I th especially when it's to be, I wish people who think they don't like coffee or um, are, are, are convinced that the only way they can drink it, it's okay if you just want to drink it this way, but only they can drink it is by like adding a bunch of milk and sugar to it. Um, I just wish those people knew that all the coffee they've had is bad coffee <laughs> because I think people form a rule because I think this is how I have to do it because this coffee I've had, if I taste it without cream and sugar, it tastes horrible, you know? Well, and they are right though. It, it could taste good, but it just like my stomach couldn't take it because it's too acidic. Right. But, so. but the, the specific bit of knowledge that I wish people knew is that all the coffee they've had is bad. Or they wouldn't have to add sugar. In yes. It. And it at least would change the game. Um, but people don't know it, it is hard to convince people because mm -hmm. they think I have had coffee a bunch of places, you know? Yeah. That's true. Um, and they've had grocery store coffee, they've had Folgers that their grandpa made, and they've had Starbucks and they've had a bunch of places. And all that is all bad coffee. Um I mean, it really is crazy how much of a difference it makes when you have good coffee beans. And I don't really like black coffee because it upsets my stomach. Yeah. But one time at church I had a blueberry donut. And a cup of coffee and I was kind of desperate and mm -hmm. I like took a drink of the coffee because I took Mason's coffee and took a drink of uh -huh. it after a bite of the blueberry donut. And uh -huh. I was like, oh, this is really good. Like yep. this makes me. You balanced it out a little. It's like sweet, yeah. sweet and. Yeah. Cause I don't like yeah. the really fruity coffees because it's like missing the sweetness. Yeah. That's how I feel about fruity sparkling water too. Huh. I'm like, if it should be sweet and it's not sweet, I'm sad about that. I see. But taking the bite of the donut balanced it out. And I was like, oh, yeah. this is why people like black coffee. And then I was like. This is going to make my stomach mad. I have to stop. Yeah. I think sometimes people will have a black coffee. That's some really good, fresh, not over roasted, not low grade coffee beans or whatever. And they may not like be instantly in love with it, but I think they're like, Oh, they, that's you, different. Yeah. And it's sort of like, yeah, this is what we're talking about. This is why all of us are obsessed with this stuff. Yeah. But you think we really l were obsessed with like burnt, <laughs> like, ash tasting like yeah death liquid even within the milk drinks i feel like it makes a big difference yeah. like espresso shots that are not good versus ones that are really good make totally. a very big difference totally yep it's like you can taste it in there yep. like the sugar can't really cover it up yep okay that's a good one that was a good question you know what oh i also thought about um i think i wish people knew about plastic mm -hmm. and like how how much the world benefits if you try to stop using one-time use items as much as possible. And like, I've been learning a lot lately about 
you know, the like really unethical practices that go into making our iPhones and Mm -hmm. like just a lot of things that we get come from manufacturing that is if we saw it in the United States, we'd be appalled. Right. But because it happened somewhere else, we don't have to think about it. And Mm -hmm. and like since I've learned that you can't not think about it. And that's gone into the reason why a lot of the stuff I use, I try really hard to get things that have that will last a really long time or that have been, you know, certified to be with someone like making a living wage in good working conditions that can like improve their life, you know? So I think that's something Mm -hmm. else I wish people knew is like the true impact. And I don't think I even really know the true impact, but the true impact of, of our purchases and like our, our wastefulness, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's good. I also wish people knew about our YouTube channel and and our Patreon. Oh yeah. You and, know. Um, also I wish people knew that I am tutoring chemistry. So if you want an Ochem tutor, I do Gen Chem too, but if you want an Ochem tutor, especially hit me up and I can give you the code to yeah. go to my, especially if you tutoring. want an Ochem tutor who's, I don't know, done like 180 <laughs> something episodes of a podcast about chemistry. Just saying. <laughs> I don't know if that's something that you ever thought about. I did not expect you to say that (laughs) at all. And it really made me laugh. It caught me so off guard. I like the idea of us just like staying on this question for a long time and it just being like, (laughs) we're talking about things that like our episodes we've already done and we want people to go listen to. And then also like doing a lot of just promoting the podcast that clearly people are already listening to because they're the ones listening right now, you know? Oh, and I wish people (laughs) knew that you and Mason have a coffee roasting business. Yeah. And I wish they kind of knew like that it was good coffee, but good has an E at the end. And it's like good dot coffee with yeah. any, yeah. And that's where you could find <laughs> it and buy it, or if, if you wanted, you know. <laughs> it's like she, all these like. <laughs> Alicia had no idea the worm kind of worm she was opening for us. Yeah, exactly. Um, okay, um, okay. Here's here's some that came from Brian uh, M. And is that supposed to be Brian M? Mm-hmm. Okay. Brian M. Uh, two that aren't in my mind for something to do. Oh wait, no, sorry. But uh, but Oh, that's, that's you saying Sorry, that. that's my note. I have, there are two things that are on my mind for something to do, but they would take a lot of research to do. Oh, okay, got it. And that's concrete mm-hmm. and film photography. And so Brian and Aaron, who requested these, I hear you. They're very complex topics, but I'm not giving up on them yet. And I've also asked about both of these mm-hmm. recently. I have yes. The photography one I've asked about a couple times too, Brian. Yeah. Aaron, I asked about concrete recently because we had a slab poured at our house mm-hmm. and I was like, uh, Melissa, speaking of how is this Both happening? of those I've gone to start the research and it's like, oh, this is just going to take more time than I have to give right now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm kind of saving it for like when my life comes down, which mm-hmm. when will that be? Who's to say, but yeah, I've, I've got some things on the horizon I think will happen, but I either... For the concrete one, I had to go. I was like looking and needed to get a book from the UNT mm. library that I like. <laughs> did, I didn't have time to go get it, but I was uh-huh. like, "Wow, this is way more complicated than I thought." Yeah. And another one, kind of like that, is nitrogen and how nitrogen gets um, taken from the air and put into our plants. Mm-hmm. So those are like some three big ones that I'm like, "Oh yeah, these are going to be like a heavy hitter." Like I really need yeah. to think about this. Yeah. But those are good ones. Yeah. I think you really want to get it right. Have it have time to sort of like really set and once the episode's done be like a very firm um and very like kind of a have a good foundation to it where it's had real time like to cure and yeah yeah and i know those are all are they concrete puns i was just oh <laughs> circling. foundation cure got it got it set got it. yeah i'm a little tired so i mean me too that's why that pun was bad um <laughs> you because know, usually they're all so good um <laughs> Do you want to read this from Kaibe? Yes. Okay. So Kaibe yeah. sent in something. I shortened it a little because it has a lot of feedback, but it was healthy, helpful. So Kaibe is our our friend in Brazil who's also a biochemist. He's our resident. I'm going to correct Melissa if she says something wrong about biochemistry, and I'm very thankful for that. Mm-hmm. And he said that he just listened to the glutamate episode, and he had some curiosities to add about glutamate and some concerns about monosodium glutamate. So first, the concerns... I don't think there's health problems related to using monosodium glutamate consumption per se, which that's also what we talked about. But then he said, what I don't like is the use of the food and the way the food industry uses it. 
I can say more about the Brazilian industry, but I believe it's similar in other countries. Mara sodium glutamate here in Brazil is basically ultra in ultra processed food, such as condiments, chips, cookies, ham, sausages. And it's a flavor enhancer with the intent to make the product more pal palatable, more tasty, and it increases salivation, meaning that you're going to eat more of the food because your body is tricked into thinking you should eat more of the food through that. It substitutes salt in products, and the brands use this to decrease salt um, in their product, uh, decrease salt to brand that their product is healthier because it has less salt, but it's not really because by being an ultra processed food, it's far from healthier. And in Brazil, we don't have any legislation saying that companies can't do that. Mm. So that is kind of tricksy. Yeah. Then he says, a curiosity is how it's produced. Before, in the old days, the glutamate had to be extracted from gluten, which is the protein of wheat, which is very laborious. But nowadays, biotechnology took the place and basically... They, at least here in Brazil, they use sugarcane molasses medium and add bacteria that will ferment the sugars and produce and excrete the glutamate, which is mm. very cool. And then it's filtered and crystallized. Wow. Um, and that's a similar to a process they do for fertilization, like for fertilizer. Mm -hmm. And then he said one more thing. Um, he said a few other things about his research, but uh, – what I think is one of the main functions of glutamate in our body is the brain. Glutamate is the main excitation neurotransmitter we have in the brain, which is the, uh, and it's converted to GABA, which is the main inhibitory neurotransmitter. So without a good biochemical balance of glutamate, our brains cannot function. Whoa. So I thought that gives a little bit of here's why we talk about it being bad and here's why it's good and important. Yeah. Interesting. So that was a great overview. Yeah. I love having smart people who know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. who are interested in our topics and are willing to just share off the top of their head. Yes, 100%. Hey, Bit also sent some stuff about yogurt, but that episode hasn't even aired yet, I think, or it's just aired when we recorded this. So I was going to wait and do it in next month. Nice. Yeah. Just because, you know, I just spread the love for yeah. Hey, Bit out a little bit. 100%. Yeah. It does also remind me about. Should we, can we isolate the glutamate? What do you mean? I'm just kidding. Do you remember when we talked about that in the episode? You kind of made a sing song and you're like, you got to isolate the glute. I don't remember it's that just like at the all. The way it rhymes. It's, mm, it's no. what happens whenever I've listened to an episode <laughs> multiple times editing it and stuff. And Melissa. We recorded just... that episode so long ago <laughs> because yeah. we, we took some time off. And um, had like a nice long break to get us our creative juices back flowing again. And so it's truly probably <laughs> been three months since we recorded that episode. And I don't remember singing a song at all. It wasn't really you singing it, but just like it had the rhythm to it that we kind of remarked Isolate on. Isolate the glue to me. Yeah. I just, don't remember that. Yeah. That's not to say it didn't happen. Though. Oh, it happened. <laughs> I even think that might have ended up in one of our shorts too, which is why I saw it so many times. Oh yeah, yeah. If I'm yeah, making it yeah. into a short. That means I'm watching that little piece multiple over and over and over again. times. While thanks it's, for doing that. Yeah. Anyway, so recently um, we've been we, we have a roommate who has dogs, and uh, the dogs will hear other dogs barking, even though they can't see anything, and then like start to be barky. Uh -huh. And so we were like, oh, we could play TV and then we have YouTube. And I'm like, let's get us some views on chemistry for your life. Nice. But then if I walk into the living room, sometimes I'm just like assaulted by my own voice, which, you know, can be very like yes. chugging thing. And I yep. got so irritated at Mason because I was like, I don't want to listen to myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I also have been listening to things yep. back every once in a while. I'll just like go into the room and be like, ugh. And I hear... I'm used to hearing us both way more, mm -hmm. both right now. I mean, Melissa specifically does not like to listen while we are recording. She doesn't really need to either. Yeah. But Jim, Jim is hearing us while we're talking yep. in his ears. And not then like I hear us when I'm editing it. And so Melissa does can do the whole deal and never have to hear it. It's true. <laughs> so <laughs> Until I play it on my TV so my dog stopped working. And that, but that works better than anything else. If I play music, it's like the music is too up and down, but yeah. I think we're consistently talking and it's people's voices that they know. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's been working really well. Yeah. So, so if you want to get us views on YouTube, play us for your dogs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I think that's it. Do we have any more questions? Nope. Okay, great. Well, this was a fun little March uh, Ask a Chemist. Yeah. 
It was. Thanks for all your questions. Uh, we really appreciate it. I don't remember how we finish these episodes out. We do the same, almost the same thing now. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. go ahead. So thanks for your questions, like Melissa said. Yeah. You can send those to us. Some of these are like, you know, follow-ups on episodes we did, as you can tell. Mm-hmm. Some of them are totally new questions. Some of them are like quick. Melissa can answer it right now off mm-hmm. top of her head, just with her chemistry knowledge. Just this up in, up in her glutamate uh, sphere that she has up in here. My glutamate noggin. Um. And then some of them were like, this is a full on episode and we'll have to do that down the road. Like film and concrete. Yep. So please send this to us at mm-hmm. our website, chemforyourlife.com. You can find the way to send, submit them there. Chem for your life. That's F-O-R, yourlife.com. To share your thoughts and ideas. We'd love to hear those. If you'd like to help us keep our show going and contribute to cover the cost of making it, you can go to patreon.com slash chem for your life to join our super cool chem community of patrons and keep the show going and get some cool stuff uh, behind the scenes, uh, secret podcasts, that kind of stuff on there. We'd love to have you. If you're not able to do that, you can still help us by subscribing on our favorite podcast app, rating and writing our review on Apple Podcasts, and also subscribing on our YouTube channel. Those things all help us to share chemistry with even more people. And now I just lost my spot. This episode of Chemistry for Your Life was created by Melissa Collini and Jan Robinson. Jan Robinson is our producer, (laughs) and this episode is made possible by our financial supporters over on Patreon. It means, seriously, it means so much to us that you all want to support Chemistry for Your Life and make chemistry accessible for even more people. Mm -hmm. And those supporters are our new friends, Colin and Jeanette. You'll get your shout out next week. Avishai B., Bree M, Brian K, Carol R, Chris and Claire S, Chelsea B, Derek L, Elizabeth P, Emerson W, Hunter R, Jacob T, Christina G, Katrina H, Latila S, Lynn S, Melissa P, Nicole C, Rachel R, Sarah M, Stephen B, Shadow, Suzanne P, Timothy P, Venus R, Radioactive Dreams, and Oh, I already shouted out Colin and Jeanette at the top. (laughs) Well, thanks again for everything you all do to make Chemistry for Your Life happen. And also uh, be sure to go check out Bree's um, work on our YouTube channel or you can follow her. It's linked in our show notes. Yay, Chemistry. Yay, Chemistry. (laughs) Because there's no no references in this one. I was waiting for the references. Gotcha. Gotcha.